So if you're like me, you're having a great time with your LEDs. Sooner or later, you'll probably run into the situation where you have separate parts of your house where you've got lights that you want to turn on at the same time and display the same effects. When I first did my lights, I didn't know how to do that. Turns out it's not very hard. I think I say that a lot. The first thing you have to do to set up your second or third or fourth Wi-Fi control board is to take the sketch that you have currently on your first control board, make a copy of it. There aren't too many things that you need to change. The most important thing are these MQTT topics. Unfortunately, you can't have separate devices subscribing to the same MQTT topics, at least as far as I know. If there is a way, somebody please let me know. So the easy thing to do is to pick one word that describes this second board and use that word when you make changes to the Arduino sketch and when we get into the configuration file for Home Assistant. So for me, in this example, I'm putting new lights on the side of the house. So I'm just gonna call it side. So at the end of the middle section of the MQTT topic, I'm gonna just put the word side over and over and over again. If your new string of lights has a different number of LEDs than your previous lights, make sure to update it here. There's a part here that I'm not sure needs to be unique, but I've made it unique on all of mine. Again, might not be necessary, but it certainly doesn't hurt because I've done it and it works. I'm sure if it's unnecessary, somebody will let me know. Okay, once you've made those changes, you can upload your sketch to your new D1 Mini or Node MCU board or whichever Wi-Fi control board you're using. The next step is all about configuring Home Assistant. So open up your configuration.yaml file. I always like to make a copy of mine first, especially if I plan on making big changes. And in this case, we're gonna make some big changes. All right, we're just gonna start at the top until we find a part that we need to copy. The first section in my configuration file is the lights. So grab that whole chunk, copy it, and paste it right below. Now go in and change the MQTT topics to match what you just put on your Arduino sketch. And they have to match. It is case sensitive. So if you've used capitals on your Arduino sketch, you need to use capitals in the same places in your Home Assistant configuration file. And I'm gonna add more than one board. I'll have my first board, a board called side, and a board called tree, because there's a big tree in the backyard that I put a bunch of lights on as well. Now the next section that we're gonna copy is the input select section. This is the part that makes the drop down menu where you can choose your effects. We're gonna copy this once for each of our new boards, and we're gonna copy it an extra time because we're gonna make a menu to set all of the boards to run the same effect at the same time. Now, if you knew that all you wanted to do was have them all do the same thing every time, then you don't need to set up an input select list for each board. You can just set up one and then have your automation set up so that every board gets its effect from that one list. But the way I've done it just makes it more flexible. If I want different lights on the trees than I have on the front of the house, this way I can do that. The next section we need to copy is the input number section, which used to be called input slider. If you're running a version of Home Assistant older than 0.55, yours will be called input slider. This is the section that makes the animation speed slider. So because we want these lights to all work at the same time doing the same things, we're gonna also create an all slider so that when we adjust the all slider, all the lights will respond in the same way and change speeds together. Okay, now we get into the automations section. And if you're on a newer version of Home Assistant, it's gonna be automations old. We're gonna copy the one for input select. We're gonna paste a copy for each of our boards and change the name, just like we've been doing. And again, we're gonna make one for the all group. This one's gonna be a bit unique. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy the action because each of these actions is going to send an MQTT message to set each different board to that same effect that you selected from the all effects list. I hope I'm not making that sound more complicated than it really is. Now we scroll down a little more and we get to the animation speed automation. And this is gonna be similar to the select effect automation. We're gonna copy it once for each new board. Then we're gonna add another copy for the all group. We copy the action and we paste it for each of our boards and we change the MQTT topic in each of those copies to match our boards. I'll bet by now you're getting the hang of it. The last thing I wanna do is show you how to modify the timed automations that I made to turn the lights on and to turn them off. 
The first one is the sunset automation. This one is gonna get long. The part we need to change the most is under the action. I already had a lot of actions for this automation, and now that I'm adding two more LED control boards, it just got a lot longer. In this automation, I'm setting an effect three different times. So each time I run the set effect action, I need to add a copy of it for each individual board. And I wanna do that before each delay. Remember, we set an effect, it lasts for an hour, that's the delay, and then we change the effect. And that order is important. So three different times, we're going to copy the information for the action, paste it, and change it to be specific to the board. What would we do without copy and paste? Now the last thing is to turn the lights off at 10 o'clock, which my neighbors appreciate, and yours probably do too. For this automation, I used the automation editor just to give an example of how it works. So I go into automation editor and I select the automation that I wanna change. In this case, all I need to do is add a couple of new actions. The trigger is the same and the condition is the same. So for each additional board, I add a new action telling the automation to turn that board off. And that's it. Save it and you're done. Now restart Home Assistant and we're ready to test. If all went well, it'll look like this. I hope that was useful to you. It certainly was useful to me. It's simple, it's easy, but it was something that I needed to know that I didn't know and I couldn't find. So I put this together for the folks that right now are like I was before I knew what I know now. Yeah. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for asking me questions. It's great to know that what I'm doing is interesting to folks. Until next time, adios.